Indiana. News, sports, education, and entertainment. Wake up, GI, with Jeffrey Smith. Brought to you by the Geary Community Schools Corporation. All right, everybody, we're back. It is about uh, 37 minutes after that. Once again, shout out to uh, Mary and Armand. Very informational uh, segment that we just had. Make sure you go check them out at Ivy Tech this coming Saturday, 10 to 2, uh, and learn about real estate. Uh, they, they almost had me buying a house, and I'm already straight, so that's just how good they are. Uh, we're going to transition to another guy we've been talking up on this show a lot. I've got an opportunity to meet him many, many moons ago, but he is out here doing it. I still have the little model he gave me in my office of the little paper, uh, the little cardboard ambulance. And as I said, I'm just impressed by this guy's story. you got a fleet now. Look at him coming in with his pocket squares, his lapel shield. He's just he's just doing it now. Our good friend Alex Dunlap of Round the Clock Ambulance uh, is on the show. Welcome, my friend. Hey, thank you. Yeah, good morning. Pocket square. <laughs> yeah, look at you. You're looking very prosperous, my my friend. How many uh, how many uh, like how many trucks you got in the fleet at this point? Uh, we we still have ten, but I um I added one thing. Last time I came, I yeah. talked to you about uh, me adding wheelchair service. I remember that. I, I, we've done it now. Oh, so, so we have wheelchair service operating now. So yeah. Uh, what that means for the people is that if you can walk, yeah, or if you're in a wheelchair, yeah, then we can take you. Oh my goodness! You don't have to just be a, a ambulance or a bed bound patient. Now. Yeah, no, yeah. no. Yeah. And so, uh, as I was telling, you know, I, was, I think maybe about two weeks ago, I was talking about you, just kind of recalling some of the things that we were doing, and uh, and obviously, I was applauding your entrepreneurial efforts because. You know, to go out here and just, you know, leave one, you know, the corporate world and then kind of jump in both feet first into what might be the deep end. But I, I'm sure you you were crawling before you actually started running. But I, it's just an amazing story. I mean, it, it really is. And to see you kind of operate in this space of healthcare that a lot of us really don't know about. As I said, as I told you last time, we want an ambulance to be available uh, when we need one, but we don't really think about it, and we don't, and most of us don't know how it operates. I mean, it really doesn't. And I was talking to the EMT guy, my friend Jose, who works here. Oh yeah, we went over there the other day. Yeah, and so I always kind of look. I always, I always learn a lot from him. And so I was, you know, it's, I was just kind of. How did you, you know, explain to the audience real quick once again? How did you even think about getting into this? Yeah. So uh, again, my, I'm Alex Dunlap the third, born and raised in Gary, yeah, Indiana. Yeah. Right. So, and I'm. Uh, Aren't you married to my classmate? I am married to your classmate. <laughs> we'll maybe keep our name off the yeah, right now. Yeah. Tishy tells me it's okay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but I want to get I, you in I, trouble. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I, I think she knows I'm it. most talkative. I, after all, she voted for me. Did you win that? I won it every way. year. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> hey, but I guess you know you pull out the best of yeah, us yeah. Yeah, when we on this radio. But again, uh, so uh, I was in I I was in. IT, uh, running the IT department at PepsiCo. Yeah. Um, saw the handwriting on the wall and said, hey, you better make a decision for yourself before they make the decision for right. you. Uh, so right. Right, you knew they were going to downsize or something? Well, no, it just it just felt different. Right. right? So uh, after year, many years, it started to doing a lot of outsourcing. Oh, yeah. I became a manager then that managed the outside entity and yeah. the internal stakeholders. Oh, my God. And for a while, I said, well, you know, it feels different now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I've always had entrepreneurial you know, entrepreneurial spirit. So uh, I had a cousin who was actually doing the medical transportation. Right. Uh, I went and saw his operation. I said, hey, you know, it looks pretty good. I, I think you're doing okay. So right. I mean, uh, so you need somebody to join you? And, and I did. Yeah. And uh, so a year after I joined, uh, we I converted the company to an ambulance company. So we got... Really Where did he go? Well, he was still, okay. he was still part right, of it. He was right. still part of it at that time. Yeah. But since then, he's now moved on to something else. So I'm the only owner now. Yeah. Since then, he, uh, but we were all... So uh, you were just uh, medical transport at first, right? Yeah. Just hauling people to and from doctor's offices. Yeah, in, a, in, a wheel, in wheelchair vans. In, in wheelchair vans. Yeah, and wheelchair. then you said, you know what? This thing can go ambulatory. Yeah. Now, yeah. Where would, what, what gave you that spark? Well, it's, it's, it's more of how you want to continue to progress, right? right. So you have, it, whenever you, and I, I've talked to this about all, to all, any entrepreneurs, that whenever you look at something, always consider what the next step is. Right. Even even your exit strategy. You need to consider all, everything. Right. right. Whatever it is about it. So the next progressive or step meant ambulance. First, right, right. Right. And so, but when I saw the difference in how, again, another decision made based on how the world was operating, wheelchair service was, uh, kind of up and down right. for us, uh, right. even though it's a it's ne necessary compartment of what we need. So now, when I've int introduced it back into uh, our our system, I introduced it a little differently. Right. Uh, so, but 
it was just about it's kind of like an added permission. luxury now for you because it's not your mainstay right and so that's why you can kind of come out and say hey guess what we've added it so now you have expanded your circle versus kind of depending on something that you said that was kind of up and down i like that exactly right and that's anything so whatever entrepreneurs if you're listening out there just consider whatever the next step is yeah consider that adding and building your portfolio to you know maybe in the same space that you're in i wouldn't recommend going outside of the space too much yeah but how can you you know be the expert in that space now, so in transportation, we are the experts. Now, was it, you know, when you got into ambulatory, was that intimidating? Because from the outside looking in, it seems that you would also be competing uh, with municipalities that would uh, that are kind of, fi- you know, have this kind of stuff in-house, or you would have to go out here and maybe contract with municipalities. You're getting more involved into politics and, and, and municipalities when you get into ambulatory service. Is that correct? Sure. So when... Not really competition with the municipalities. Yeah, yeah. It's really can how how it can support. Okay. So we support Gary. Yeah. Uh, when it comes down to nine one one, when they're overrun with calls and we're able to support, we send our ambulance out to oh, respond to nine one one calls. Right. Now for our, my competition, absolutely, we have com- competitors out there that have been out there fifty years. Right. Right. Years. So that that's a it's a little uh, so are the so, so are the days because I I. I thought back in the day that a lot of cities would invest in their own ambulatory services and that would kind of operate under the fire departments and things like that. Is that going away? Are people more inclined to contract this out to people like yourself versus keeping it in-house off the books? Yeah, yeah some, in some cases, cities either have their own, like Gary, they have their own. Okay. Um, Gary does? Gary does okay. have their own. They, they keep, you know, oh, yeah, that's right. Own. That's Jose. Yeah, that's Jose. <laughs> well, that's Jose. He's on the teaching end, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Well, he's, well, he's the trainer. Officer, he's yeah, the yeah, trainer. Yeah, on the training end. Uh, but also, you have uh, areas like Maryville, right. which contracted out to uh, companies like myself. Yeah, that makes so, sense. So it, it depends on what they want to do. Now, you know, Anytime uh, any business looks at contracting out, it's well, probably based on, you know, do I have to pay benefits? That, that's exactly right? what it's about, and benefits. All, yeah. I'm paying you guys versus <laughs> internalizing this right. if I'm running this city. Right, and all the equipment that's invested right. and all of the other training and all of the other stuff. Can I rely that on a outside entity or do I need to keep that internal? So right. th- th- that's how they make those decisions based on that. So, no, I mean, because yeah. if, if I was in charge, as I've told you this, and, you know, I would say this even if you weren't here, I would go to a person like you because... Just by the way you've been operating since you've existed, you are operating at the state of the art level, and so I'm, I'm more willing to take my chances. Not really, I don't even look at it as taking chances. I'm more willing to contract with a guy or a firm that is really in the industry. They know what the latest technology is. They're up. They're keeping their they're keeping right. their uh, vehicles upgraded. Than me having to put somebody on the city payroll and hope that they can keep up with what's going on and what the trends are. That's right. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm when, when I go to my next meeting yeah. to get contracts, yeah. I'm bringing you. Oh, okay, there you go. There you go. I need a part time job. <laughs> All right. <yeah. laughs> we talk with Alex Dunlap of Round the Clock Ambulatory Service. Uh, just it's always an interesting talk when when he comes in. Uh, so kind of let us know where you at now. Talk about your employees. I remember last time you were here, you were increasing your employees. And so where are we at now? How many we got? Yeah, yeah, so I only added uh, some wheelchair drivers, but I can tell you, I need EMTs. Oh. So this, this today is going to be a conversation about EMTs okay. and paramedics. Yes. I got to have them. Right? Okay. So if you're an EMT, you're you're finishing your class or your training. Yeah. Come on in. If Why didn't you tell me? I could have got Jose in here. Well, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get what Jose. In here. <laughs> <laughs> but if you are if you're already a seasoned EMT, right. We have complimentary uh, 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 pay plans that you would enjoy. Right. Uh, flexible schedules. Uh, if you're in school, we we flex around that. If you want to work part time or full time, whatever that is. We make sure we can flex around it, but I gotta, I gotta have you today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, paramedics, well, we will pay you all the way up until I think twenty five dollars or something. Like wow. That. So it's it's a pretty good pay for paramedics. Right. Because to me, I think they're rolling doctors. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So yeah. you got to think about it. If you're in need, dire need, and you're in the back of an ambulance. Uh, you want that person to know what they're doing, but they're moving. They're in a moving vehicle. They like, are. They I'm are. Like a nurse or a doctor. No, no. You, I like that. So uh, that's is I'm there talking. is there I know I know um we had Dr. Seabrook in here a while mm-hmm. ago, and she talks about the shortage of doctors. Is there a shortage of healthcare workers in general right now? Because uh-huh. I see a lot of people running around here in scrubs. But maybe they're not doing anything. Maybe they're just wearing them. What's that about? You know what? It might be like the new wave of people <laughs> out, outside in, in pajamas and houses. Maybe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's certainly a shortage yeah. of uh, EMTs. Uh, 
paramedics. I mean, I think the, the latest count I had was under 2,000 wow. for the entire state. Wow. Wow. Okay. It, so it's a, it's a, everybody's fighting for that same resource, right? Um, so we try to make ourselves as much you know as, as attractive as possible as an entity. We are a family, so right. if you want to look at how we are against our competitors, we we are a family, and you'll come and you'll be a part of that family. Now, what does what does shortages like that do as far as as you you, you were just talking about your competitors and things like that? And I liken it to you know sports franchises, sports teams like that. You know how it is. Your sports team when free agency comes. Yep. That's when you overpay for players, and so you know when you when you talk about an EMT paramedic shortage, does it force you all in the business to sometimes go out here and maybe overpay? Is there a risk of somewhere down the line after you get those numbers to where you were? Now you've got maybe your labor cost a little out of whack compared to where you wanted to go. Is yeah. there a danger of that? Yeah, it, it certainly is a danger of that you have to um, flex that with. Um, so what, the way I look at it is. I go out and I try to get the best resource. Right. I, I can afford to overpay the best resource. Okay. But I can't afford to pay everybody. There you go. Right? So, there you go. So if I get that one key player, then then I know I can I can afford to do that. Right. But I can't do that for everyone. Right. So right. It's something. So I got to get that one guy, that one person, yes. and then I can kind of make up with the you know with the rest. With the rest. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, but yeah, I mean, your competitor is always. Uh, looked at a little differently than you are, especially being longer in the in industry. Oh, well, so I find yeah. about a lot of different uh, yeah. things about that. But but hey, we're we're a family. We've been going again, this is our tenth year. Nice. Uh September I gotta talk to Chelsea to figure out how we can make that look very attractive. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Put some yeah. pizzazz on that Absolutely. thing in September. But, but yeah. Oh, yeah, so ten year we so we're not going anywhere. Yeah. Uh we, we we're doing what we have to do. Trick out an ambulance and rent out a hall <laughs> and just sit over there and just celebrate, <laughs> buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I see. And then I have a full bar coming out of the back of the ambulance. Oh wow! <laughs> I like that. That's there you go. Man. There you go. That's so. what I do here. Ideas and dreams are made. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Jeff, we did, we've done a, a few things too. We got something, some other things coming up. Yes. So just last uh, last week or so, we did the vendor fair. Right. At the um, at the Railcat Stadium. Nice. Uh, it was. It was well attended event. Uh, had over twenty some odd vendors there. Right. Every every healthcare avenue you would think of. Nice. There, sit with displays, talking to uh, the just the residents of Gary coming through. Right. So it was a wonderful thing. Good. Uh, we also last week we we did the EMS it was National EMS Week. Right. What that means is you just highlight all the EMS workers. Right. Yeah. So we were able to put a, a food truck, and we we've, we've done this before. Uh, we put a food truck in front of the Ameriville townhouse uh, okay. uh, thing and then let the firefighters and everybody come and eat for free on us. Oh, so, so that's what was going on last week. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I know they had something in Gary on Arthur. Uh, Jose gave me something. Did you go to that one too? I, I did not go to that one, but they highlighted their this okay. is 50 years for the For the Gary, firefighters. right, right, right. So they highlighted their uh, EMT of the yeah. year and their okay. record of the year and other folks. So they, they did a great job. So 50 years, that's a... Which, listen, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm impressed too with 10 though. I, I mean, for real, when you just think about somebody who just jumped into a whole other sector and has been able to prosper in it, as I said, every time you come back, you tell me a little bit more of your story and what, and I can tell that you learn all the time. You're always taking in information. That's probably one of your biggest skill sets in addition to many others, but it, it, I'm, I'm just all, I'm, I'm just very impressed. But as you said, keep going. You got some more stuff I oh, want you to get. Oh, I got other things. Oh, so I'll, I'll be talking with. Now you've had these young ladies here before. Yeah, uh, Ironworks, uh, Imani, and, yeah, and, uh, and, uh, Faith. and Faith. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to be featured in July as one of their oh. um, entrepreneurs. Oh, and we're okay. Be talking about a thing. What do you call it? The thousand cuts. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Thousand cups. Yeah. yeah. Thousand Faith, cuts. they're some smart girls. Oh, they're my neighbors now. They're always yeah. Well, here's a true story. I I heard them on your radio show. Oh, okay. And I reached out to them. Yeah. I said, look, I have to be a part of whatever you, because I, I believe, listen to them, I just believe in this story. Yeah. You know, plus, these are two girls from my same alma mater uh, in Purdue. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Smart so, people. Yeah. But, uh, but let's listen to those ladies. So we met, and uh, we had a conversation about you know, what it is that I can uh, offer them. Right. And, and, and help them forward. But I believe in what they do. Yeah. Uh, so I'll be featured in, I think it's July 13th. Yeah. Uh, at one of their uh, events. Yeah. And, and we'll be talking about a thousand, all, all the small things that entrepreneurs do that, that, that really cause death. <laughs> so you can learn from me. Yeah. You know, all the mistakes that I've made over yeah. the years, you can learn from oh, me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think a person absolutely should come and listen to uh, you tell your story and, and tell your journey because I just think it's a, it's a lesson in life and, 
it's a lesson about, you know, because you're very, you're very like transparent about your journey. And so I think a person can just sit and, you know, obviously you tailor make things for you and your skill quality. But as I said, I would listen to you. I do listen to you all the time. <laughs> okay. I don't know if, I, if, if it works, but I listen sure to you. Yeah, it does. Right. But anyway, and, go and, ahead. And listen to you, it works too. <laughs> and that, that's really about all that we highlighted. And, and I'll, I'll come, next time I come, yeah. I'll probably have something else that we've added to No, our no, so okay. Just looking at different ways of a continuous improvement. Right. So that, that's all we So how do people, about. okay, so once again, let's get yeah. back to your business and how people can access. I mean, I remember before we were talking about insurance and all that kind of stuff if a person I mean, if a person right now let's say uh is caring for a loved one and would like medical transportation and things like that and are, are listening and want to and love your store and want to use you how do they go about doing it is it a big out-of-pocket expense how does one go and you because there are people who have challenges with uh insurance and things sure. like that yeah sometimes an ambulance uh transportation gets a bad rap yeah it does I, I hear people call me all the time say why am i not not my not my service right. like they call me and say why am i being charged so much well, it does cost uh, uh, quite a bit to it does. run ambulance and have two people on the ambulance and have all of the different things that are in there. The that bells and whistles, the, right. That, to support that. However, um, we, when you're getting transported from us to medical uh, facilities, the first thing we do is try to make sure that you qualify insurance. So we try to hit your insurance first. We never would okay. go to you first right, okay. or out of pocket. Right. Uh, we work with that uh, many times. Again, like you say, I'm transparent. I, I really am. Uh, many of the ambulance service, after a course of a year, we have to um, sometimes write things off. Yeah. It's just a part of it, right? Because yeah. the patient just can't afford right. that additional that the insurance doesn't cover. Right. And I, I understand that as a part of the job. So we'll try to collect, and then if not, we'll... We won't collect. No, and so it's, you're it's one of the good ones. Yeah. You're one of the good ones. It's just it's the reality of it, yeah. right? We're not trying to uh, make sure that you go in the poorhouse for, for you already were sick. You weren't on an ambulance <laughs> because it was a joy ride. Right, right. I like and, that. Yeah, it, you were there for a reason. So yeah. uh, we want to make sure that, you know, you, 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 you're not continuing <laughs> exactly. to stress right, right. an ambulance transport. But, yes, that's the first thing. And uh, so a wheelchair it will be an out-of-pocket cost, uh, but it won't be uh, nearly as much as uh, an ambulance. So they just call our number at, at 219-879-1039 or 1039, and you talk to our, our dispatch folks, and they will make sure that they talk to you about your insurance. They will make calls to your hospital or doctor right. to make sure that they get the necessary paperwork for you. Yeah. And so we try to make that process as easy as possible. Now, how do people, okay, so this is a, a probably the obvious question that I would have is, is you talked about people calling you because most of us, if there are times when we're in need of an ambulance, we really probably, most of us would think to go through 911, right? And, and, and kind of go through that process. Do you all get people who call you directly? I mean, how does that work? I mean, are, are there people out here who like, I got, I got, a, I got an ambulance guy. Let me call him. But don't you, don't but, call 911. Well, thanks for teeing that up. So here's, here's how that goes. So if you are in distress, yes. you want to call 911. Okay. Right? Yeah. So 911, there's two components of ambulance. Right. As there's the emergency component and there's the non-emergency component. Oh, right. right? Yeah. yeah. So the emer if you're in distress, call 911 and... We may be dispatched out. You don't know. Right. But at, at any point, you want to get that the quickest response to your I like situation. That. Yeah. Right? So for a non-emergency standpoint, then you give us that call, and we will make sure that, you know, try to work with you and okay. make sure you get to your appointment. Now, so there's you, two components. Okay. Now, that goes back to the medical transport. So if I've got somebody that's got some issue and I just can't put them in the car, right. and that's where you come in that's as well. That's where you come in. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Help because a lot of folks can't even get up and down the You're stairs right. kind of thing. Yeah. They're bed bound. All those different things. Yeah. That's, that's where the ambulance uh, transportation helps. I, I like that. Be, yeah. Meet those, what they call medical necessity. And yeah. we'll work you through all of that. Yeah. Right? And so that's that's just a simple. Do call you call. ever do you still go out on calls, or is that for your men now? Uh, you know what? I I was supposed to go out uh, last <laughs> week. It was a week before last, but I had something else to do. But right. I'll, I'll go out. Oh, you uh, do? You get yeah, out there in the field, I, I, still I, I, get your hands dirty? Yeah, not as much. Right, but I'm about I, to but say because you're looking very prosperous. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking very prosperous. I was wondering if you got out of that truck yeah, again. If I get my, net, my, my fingernails covered, yeah. I, 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 I get out there. We're yeah. talking with Mr. Alex Dunlap of Around the Clock Ambulance. Sir, any other stuff you want to get out, my friend? I want you know. I want you to get those logistics again. Uh, just, just, you know, just, just happy. Uh, hiring, hiring, hiring. Hiring. Come, call me. Same number. Two one nine. 
879-1039. Right. Or you can actually go to my website at atcambulance.com. Yeah. yeah. And what you'll find there is an application form right online. You fill <laughs> that thing out and it comes to us. A simple application form yeah. comes to us. But we need you. And we need you to come and support uh, Gary and the surrounding communities like like we always do anyway. Oh, so, well, there you go. There you go, my friend. Thank you for uh, blessing us today. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. For, <laughs> it's always a pleasure talking to you because you, you bring out the hit. If we don't, if we don't say it, you bring it out again, oh, and, oh, and yeah. we make sure to hit it. So okay, I, there you go. It's the least I can do. There you go. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll tell you what, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll get a look outside weather and travel.